We do not care to hear about his strictness. Dewan kaharian kita malah berkerja semula menanda dengan kelakuan nama agri ini kendala. We do not care to hear that. Adakah kelakuan nama kita alpeni kendala? God is certainly good and gracious. Dewan tu urus saya dengan Allah menanda dengan agri berlawan. Turn with me to a scripture in Romans chapter 11. Romer ke edia leh na, adine bana na odhya. Verse twenty two, it will turn the mark. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. Both. Agar dewa tu ni dewa, khanti dewa pun kan kan. Hah? Dewa tu ni? Khanti dewa. Dewa? Khanti dewa. Adu berapa? Dewa maatra kan kan. That we do not want. We want. You know, remember what Paul says. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God. Agar dewa tu ni dewa, khanti dewa pun kan kan. Yes. God is gracious. God is good. But remember, the same God is also a God of severity. Yes. Let's not forget that. Let me take... A different translation. And it says, On them which fell severity, but continue in his goodness. But, uh, sorry, but toward the goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <coughs> Just a moment. Verse 22, I'm reading from the Amplified. Then note and appreciate the gracious kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen. But God's gracious kindness to you, provided you continue in His grace and abide in His kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off ruined away. Since the Lord's word is very clear, God is kind and good. But we must continue in humility and in brokenness in, in that contrite spirit in our lives. Now, Yes. Let me bring out another translation. It says, So you see that God is kind and also very strict. You know, today believers want only God to be kind and not strict. Remember my young brothers and sisters. Remember my older brothers and sisters. God is very kind to us. At the same time, He is very strict. 
He punishes those who stop following him. But God is kind to you if you continue following in his kindness. There is no place for pride over his kindness. Amen. How terrible it is that God being kind to you and to me and we are proud of it. <laughs> God is so kind to you. If you continue following in his kindness, God is kind to you. If you continue follow in his kindness, remain humble, no place for pride, but humble. With a contrite spirit. If you do not, you will be cut off from the tree. Dear brothers and sisters, God is good to us. The church has known much of God's blessing. You and I as part of His church, we have been blessed in our lives. Yes or no? Anybody who can testify God has not blessed you? God has been kind to all of us. God has blessed us in so many or numerous ways in our lives. We have to remain humble. God's people in the days of Jeremiah. How they turned away. When God warned them, sending his prophets, they questioned the prophets, they hardened themselves. I want to tell you that God has been very generous, very gracious to us in our lives. We have experienced seasons of His mercies and kindness in our lives. When we look at the church, we know that God sent forth seasons of revivals into His church, historically speaking. Yes. God has been gracious to his church in the past years. He sent forth men, raised them up and brought the church to places of repentance when we read the history of the church. Yes.
God has been gracious to his church. Yes. And we know that despite all that God did, when we look at the church, the church went deep again into idolatry. Into a realm where everything began to be again characterized by the pride in their lives. Yes. I don't want to be long this morning. I know that you have traveled long distances and come. Before I conclude, I would like to say one thing. God is jealous over His church. God is jealous over His people. He will not tolerate sin. He will not tolerate pride. That characterizes many things in the life and in the activities of God's people in God's house. Yes, idolatry. You know, many a time we may say that we have left idols. I have been Christian for ages. And what are you talking about idolatry? The greatest idol that we bow down is our self-life. Yes. God wants to deliver us. The self with all its pride would like to govern our lives. How sad that is. I share this example many a time. Maybe I've shared this with you before. But if you are hearing it the third time or fourth time, forgive me. Maybe this preacher has come short of many examples. But, but please listen, endure this example. But I know there are so many young people who may be hearing it for the first time. When we talk about Jesus Christ to people from Hindu background. Hindu we share Christ with them. They are very open. You like to receive Christ? You want to have Christ in your life? You want to have Christ in your home? They will say yes. But then we say to them, remove all these God and goddesses. You have to remove all these things from your life and from your home. Then have only Christ in your life. Then they will say, sorry sir. We don't want this Christ. Now we know this is the truth.
and we feel bad for them. But we never feel bad about ourselves. Listen carefully. Think about a man. In one room, he is very busy. He is busy worshipping his idols. And after having finished all that activity in that room, he comes to the other room. He takes the Bible. He opens the Bible. He reads the Bible. Very pious. And he prays to Jesus Christ. What do you think about that man? I know you are very cautious to answer me. What do you think about that man? Now when I said that there is the people from Hindu background remove all these gods, then they said, no sir, we cannot do that. And we all smiled about it. We know that that man could not have Christ because he was not willing to remove all of the gods in his life. So what do you think about this man? In one room he is worshipping all his idols. He is praying to Jesus Christ. He is reading the Bible. He is singing even songs. He raises his hands. What do you think about that man? This is what many times we are. Monday through Saturday, we are busy in one room. Worshipping all the idols we like in our lives. The job, the beautiful married life. Brother, you only got us married. Yes, very true. God gave you the lovely wife. God gave you the beautiful husband, the no, no, handsome husband. So listen carefully. God gave you that job, no doubt. Listen carefully. Monday through Saturday, we are so happy and blessed and busy in one room, bowing before all these idols. And on Sunday, we come to the other room. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. All that I have is given by you. Listen. God is not deceived. Father, awaken me. Father, awaken me. Oh, the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Father,
Say not unto me, sleep on. Say not unto me, sleep on. For the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Father, awaken me. For the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Father, 